Good? Good, miss? All right. Many of you are aware that there is a, will be a one world religion, right? Anyone not aware of that? And although we won't be here to see the Antichrist or experience the wrath of God against this Christ-rejecting world, I believe we will see the implementation of some of these worldwide changes that will be in place when the Antichrist comes on the scene. And we're going to look at one of those changes in this update this morning, a one world religion. When we were in Revelation, we looked at Revelation 17, and that chapter describes this religion, and it also refers to it as a harlot. Now please understand the word harlot has been used throughout the Old Testament as a metaphor for a false religion. And I believe this false religion is going to be based in the progressive New Age belief that all roads lead to heaven, that we all serve the same God. No matter what faith you are, we all serve the same God. Now, I know right now it's still difficult to believe how the false prophet, who, by the way, I believe could be the Pope, just saying, how he's going to get the Christians, the Muslims, and the Jews to all serve under the same religion. Well, you need to understand that the Ezekiel 38 war that will either happen prior to the tribulation or very early in the tribulation, it is during that war that the troops from the north come against Israel and that those troops are made up of some of the stand countries. And I'm going to butcher this, but countries like Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Christ forget that one, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, all the stand countries, in addition to Turkey and Iran. What's the common factor in all those countries? They're Islamic. They're made up mostly of militant Muslims. So radical Islam in that battle will be virtually eradicated when God destroys those armies that come against Israel. As for Christians, we will be raptured at this point. True believers in Jesus Christ won't be here to see this. And I want to take a moment to reassure you, because there's a lot of talk about are we raptured before, in the middle of, or at the end of the tribulation. There's a lot of talk about There's a lot of confusion. And there's a lot of churches that don't teach this at all. They don't teach it, or they teach it wrongly. Many have criticized us for being escapist. They call what we're looking for, the rapture, as escapism. That we're just looking to get out of here. We're just looking to escape. I can tell you right now, I'm looking to get out of here soon. I'm looking to get out of here before the movie comes. Or maybe after the movie. I haven't seen the movie yet. So, Either way, we could watch the movie in heaven. This is what Jesus said. Keep on the alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape these things that are about to take place. He's talking about the tribulation. And to stand before the Son of Man, Luke 21, 36. So we're told to pray that we'll escape. And this is how Jesus said that we will escape the tribulation to come. John, and John, he said to John in Revelation 3, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from... And listen, if you don't have that word from highlighted, underlined, circled in any way in your Bibles, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10... Go there now and circle that, highlight it, underline it, point an arrow to it, rip the page out, however you want to remember it. I will save you from the hour of trial which will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Now I want you to understand here again Jesus is talking about what? What's the test that's going to come upon the whole earth? The tribulation. And if Jesus meant for us to be taken out of here in the middle of the tribulation or at the end of the tribulation, he would have used a different word here. He wouldn't have said, I'll save you from. He would have said, I'll save you through. But that's not what he said. He didn't say, I'll keep you through the trial of the tribulation as to come upon the whole world. He says, I'm going to save you from it. Now, there's those who believe that the first half of the tribulation isn't the wrath of God, but it's the wrath of man. But I would wholeheartedly disagree with that because if you read Revelation, in Revelation 6, at the beginning of the tribulation, it's clearly from the sealed judgments of God. That's God's judgment, not man's judgment. But Jesus said, I'll save my bride from this time of testing. That word in the Greek is ek, E-K, ek. And it means, it can only mean this, out of or away 
from. So Jesus said he's going to save us from the tribulation by taking us out of here and away from the tribulation. Got it? Listen, why else would Paul say comfort each other with these words? Right? And in that same passage of scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he talks about being caught up in the air to meet Jesus, right? Why would he say comfort each other with the fact that the Antichrist Christ is going to show up and cut all our heads off? That's not comforting. You will not be here to see this going on. I can assure you of that. Now, the Jews will be preoccupied building their new temple, so they're not going to complain about any of this. But once all this happens, once the, the Christians are gone and the radical Muslims are wiped out, this new religion is going to be able to take root and grow. You know there's already a headquarters for this being planned to be built in 2022? And we're going to look at that in a moment, but first I want to look at this new world religion. This new world religion will be controlled by the false prophet, which again, I believe, could be the Pope. And he's going to bring all these beliefs together as one. Now, Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 through 18, gives us several characteristics of this new world religion. It says it's immoral, it's blasphemous, it's unclean, it's an abomination, it's drunk with the blood of the saints. Now, whether that means that the tribulation saints will be martyred and there will be many who will be martyred during that time or it just means that you're systematically starved to death and believe me neither one of those methods of death is very pleasant is it but there's going to be many many who choose to come to the Lord that way you don't have to you can pray to the Lord right now to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior as your master and avoid all of this but there will be many who are going to do it the hard way. And then during this time, they will refuse to bow to the Antichrist. They will refuse to worship according to this new false religion. And believers on the earth at that time will experience the wrath of the harlot and the Antichrist. Revelation 17, 1 and verse 15 tells us that this false religion will dominate all the peoples and multitudes, nations and tongues of the earth, meaning it's going to have universal authority given to it by the Antichrist. Revelation 17, verses 2 to 3 says it's a harlot, as a harlot committing adultery with the kings of the earth, meaning that this false religion is going to influence the world's rulers and influential people. Satan is going to ensnare them because of their lust for power. That lust for power drives them away from worshiping the one true God. Their alliances to this false religion is going to unite city and state rather and the church like never before. And eventually, we're told in Revelation 17 that this harlot religion, this false religion, and the false prophet lose favor with the Antichrist because he ultimately wants the worship of the world. He doesn't want the world admiring and having adoration for these prophets, these false prophets and priests of this new religion. No matter how favorable or how popular this is he wants that for himself and he's going to re destroy the false prophet and the religious system and establish himself as god and the deception that jesus tells us is going to be so great during that time that if it were possible even the elect would be deceived now i have to admit that it's still difficult all these years to kind of figure out how this was all going to come about how are they going to ever unite the religions of the world we fight amongst ourselves. How are you ever going to bring everybody together? But listen, we don't have to wait any longer. The One World Religion Headquarters is being set up in 2022. The headquarters is called the Abrahamic Family House, and it's being built on an island in the easternmost city of Abu Dhabi. All craziness comes out of Abu Dhabi. This headquarters is done in collaboration with Pope, Pope Francis, and Sunni Muslim leader Sheikh Aman al Tayyib. They both signed a global peace covenant called the Document of Human Fraternity for World Peace. And we have a picture of them shaking hands with one another. The stated purpose of the Abrahamic family house is to bring understanding and tolerance among the face, but there's a couple notable challenges to this. First, Abu Dhabi is part of the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. 
And in the United Arab Emirates, it's illegal for Christians to proselytize. You can't convert from Islam to Christianity. It's prohibited. Now, you can convert from Christianity to Islam. They have no problem with that, but they don't like it the other way around. Now, the Pope represents Catholicism. And as I said, Catholics under this new ruling are free to convert to Islam. But like the Abrahamic family house that promises tolerance and understanding, the United Arab Emirates Constitution also guarantees freedom of religion in accordance with established customs. But I love this, that they put this in here. But the devil is in the details. He sure is. He sure is. Through certain practices like conversion from Islam, though rather certain practices like conversion to Islam are directly prohibited, the UAE defers to Sharia law, which strictly prohibits apostasy. So what they're saying here in a roundabout way is that there's room for further discussion in this matter. But it's not going to matter because after the Ezekiel 38 war, there's not going to be any radical Islam to make a threat. So this one world religious headquarters is going to have three buildings, a mosque, a church, and a synagogue. However, the church is not permitted to have a cross on top of it, which would identify it as a church. It's going to look just like the rest of the buildings. The following is an article from the Vatican News. The Abrahamic family house, which encloses a synagogue, a church, and a mosque, in a single complex, and which is scheduled to be inaugurated in 2022, is 20% complete. The Higher Committee of Human Fraternity said in a statement on Tuesday, the committee, which is also supervising the project, said is inspired by the 2019 document on whom human fraternity constructed on, in Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates. The project is closely followed by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam Ahmad El Taib of El Azhar, who endorsed the design the HCHF said. So the Vatican has stated that the Abrahamic house derives its name from the Old Testament biblical figure, Abraham, who was recognized and greatly revered, I'm having trouble talking this morning, greatly revered by Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. They already have named these three houses of worship. The Imam El Taib Mosque, the St. Francis Church, and the Moses bin Mamon Synagogue. Now, Moses bin Mamon is a prolific and influential Sephardic Jewish philosopher of the Middle Ages. He's a philosopher of the Middle Ages. Besides these three places of worship, the Vatican writes, the site includes a cultural center that aims to encourage people to exemplify human fraternity and solidarity within the community that it cherishes the values of mutual respect and peaceful coexistence, while the unique character of each faith is, per, is preserved. Religion will be used to unite the people of the world to complete the process of globalization of the world. Did you catch that part? Religion is going to be used to complete the process of globalization. All face will unite for a common purpose and you should know that that movement is already underway now for those of you who get the notes every week there is a preamble here from the UN and it's from it's written we went over it when we were in Revelation 17 the United Religions Initiative which comes right out of the UN I'm not going to read it this morning you can read it on your own but when you read this preamble it talks about United Religions. It talks about the earth. It talks about protecting our earth community. It's amazing what's in here. When you read this, you can almost hear Nimrod giving this very same speech to the people of Shinar. This is like the Tower of Babel all over again. This false religion, which serves all face and says all face lead to the same God, is in direct rebellion against the Word of God because the Word of God said only Jesus, only Jesus can lead us to heaven no one gets there except through him so this headquarters set to open in 2022 is set to open and, is, and its intention is to promote this one world religious system that the false prophet will one day force upon the world in the tribulation but for many churches around the globe today they've already adopted this false religious system and it's called progressive christianity and we looked at that the last time we had an update 
And so I'm using question marks, quotation marks rather, around the word Christianity. Because if you believe that all faiths are one and that all roads to lead to heaven, that God's going to accept all unconfessed sin and all unrepented people into heaven, then you're not a Christian. You're not a believer. I'm sorry if that offends you, but you need to get right with Jesus Christ because if you believe that and if your pastor's teaching that, run for the hills because that in and of itself is a false religion and your pastor is a false teacher. And listen, if we're seeing this false religion, a false religion that's going to be prevalent during the tribulation and churches are already teaching this garbage and they're setting up a headquarters so that they can be broadcast around the world? How close is the real thing? That's why we do these. So you have a sense of urgency. We're heading on a one, we're headed on a one course direction right for the end times. You know that, right? Jesus is coming soon. We're already beginning to see what's going to happen and take place in the tribulation. We're already beginning to see it now. So how close can the real thing be? Amen? Amen. Please stand. We're going to worship our Lord. And we're going to thank him and praise him for his word. Lord, we thank you that you've given us eyes to see. That you've given us the ability to see the deception and the lies. We thank you, Lord, that you are our Lord and Master. That we, we pray, Lord, that we would begin to see you and treat you as such that we would stop being Lord of our lives and have you be the Lord of our lives. So go before us now as we worship you and all that we say and do. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen.